Welcome. Thanks for attending. Today we're going to talk about how our mainframe FIM product, FIM Plus, can help you harden your security posture, particularly against ransomware attacks. As a product, FIM Plus is very new, especially in mainframe terms. It's been generally available since 2018 and provides file integrity monitoring capabilities to ZOS platforms that have been available on other platforms for years. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the vulnerability of the ZOS platform to malicious ransomware attacks. We'll talk a little bit about how FIM Plus works to level set everyone. Then we'll go over the specific features of FIM Plus which help thwart ransomware attacks. We'll talk a little bit about compliance and then we'll wrap up. If you have a question, there's a question box on the left side of the screen. If you type a question in there, we'll be sure to answer them at the end of the talk. Can a malicious attack happen on a ZOS mainframe? While a presentation was made at SHARE in 2017 outlining how ZOS was no less vulnerable to an attack than any other platform. The same techniques that bad actors use to compromise other platforms will work on the mainframe. Infected attachments or mimicked websites, even a janitor loading something onto a PC using a thumb drive, can all infect a PC or laptop with a keystroke capture program. The bad guys can use these types of things to collect user ID and password combinations, and voila, they have access. Typically, they then employ techniques to escalate credentials and use utilities like FTP and TN3270 to upload the malware payload. The presenter, Chad Rickensrud, made the point that with blisteringly fast encryption coupled with a centralized catalog structure, if someone got in, the results could be devastating. The other thing that's emerging in the literature on hacking is that ransomware hackers have learned that sites with detection technology like FIM, coupled with good backup and restore capability, can beat them. <clears throat> the takeaway for the hackers was to launch a two-phase attack. Compromise the backups first and then compromise the system. Chad's slides are available in the link shown on this slide. If you get a chance, you should take a look. By the way, we'll make these slides we are presenting today available to anyone attending and the links for all of the reference material is contained on the slides. With the tried and true conventional security measures, RACF, Top Secret, and ACF2, and firewalls, what you're doing is limiting access to known and trusted people. These tools are very good at that. Bad actors can steal credentials or get them from the dark web but also, previously good employees can succumb to addiction or have gambling problems and then in order to get money, sell you out. The point here is that insiders are past RACF and the firewall. A criminal with stolen credentials is indistinguishable from a legitimate employee. Although having a bad guy steal credentials or an employee go rogue is very low risk, again, the consequences can be devastating for your organization. So what can you do to protect your business if you assume that bad actors can get past the access controls and the firewall? This slide will pull all of this together. A sophisticated hacker will go through some or all of the following steps outlined on the screen. Reconnaissance phase. This is a pre-attack phase. In this phase, the bad actor will learn everything it can about the target organization. This may include searching LinkedIn for information on employees of the company, looking for public email addresses, reviewing job postings, press releases, and that kind of thing. They're seeking insiders that may help them, and they're also trying to understand if there is a corporate event where if the ransom demand is made at that time, it will cause maximum problems and embarrassment for the corporation. Think about having a ransomware attack happen just as your company is about to close a major deal. The penetration phase is a step we talked about previously. The criminals will look for a way to get a user ID and password. Because they have researched the company, they may craft an email that sounds legitimate but includes a payload which will get them the information they need to get in. With the billion or so sets of credentials that Troy Hunt has discovered on the dark web, they may just get them there. <clears throat> The fortification phase is where attackers try to hide evidence of their entry and they establish redundant methods of accessing the device and investigate methods to infect and compromise system components. In this phase, malware may be loaded onto your system using utilities like FTP. In the infiltration phase, this phase is where the attacker will search the backup data and seek to gain higher credentials and identify the files which, if they're encrypted, will cause the maximum disruption to the company. 
The spoliation phase, a spoliation is a fancy word that means to ruin something. In this phase, the hackers will ruin the backups or modify the backup of procedures so they appear to work, but don't. And then finally, after your backups have been compromised, the hacker will encrypt parts of your system and make sure that only they have the decryption key and email the ransom demand. If you pay the ransom, remember that although these people are pretty sophisticated, they are still bad people. You may or may not get the decryption key to unlock your system. One more thing on paying the ransom. <clears throat> if you, There is a school of thought that says you shouldn't pay the ransom. By paying the ransom, you're simply encouraging more attacks. I think that's one of those things that's fairly easy to say if you aren't sitting in the decision-making chair. If I was sitting in that chair and paying the ransom was the only way to get my system back, I think I know what I would do. So how can you counteract these types of threats? If you assume that they can penetrate past RACF and your firewalls, what can you do? Well, FIM Plus helps you in the fortification, infiltration, and spoliation phases of a ransomware attack. The idea being that if you detect the issues, you can thwart the final step of the ransomware attack. The rest of this presentation will focus on counteracting these threats and show how state-of-the-art security techniques, which were formerly only available on other platforms, are now available on ZOS. Remember, if you have any questions before we move on, you can type them into the question box and we'll answer them at the end. We're switching gears on you a little bit. We want to level set you with the basics of how FIM technology and our product FIM Plus works on the mainframe. This is an overview of how FIM Plus ensures files haven't changed. FIM Plus is a client server application. The trust server runs on an LPAR and the agents can run on the same or other LPARs. The communication between the trust server and the agents is via an encrypted TCP IP session. So the agent can be on the same or on different hardware. The keys are created by the agent <clears throat> and sent to the server. The keys are two-part and contain a hash from the contents of the file and a hash code from the metadata of the file. The keys from the initial scan are stored in the vault by the server and a log record is created. By the way, when these initial keys are stored, what you're doing is starting to create a whitelist of the programs you're going to allow to run on your LPAR. We'll talk more about this in a couple of slides. <clears throat> in subsequent scans, the keys are created by the agent sent to the server and these keys are compared to the ones in the vault. If all is okay, a log record indicating that is produced. We're going to go over what happens if a change is detected later on in the presentation. But now on to specific solutions. FIM Plus is a feature rich product. It's designed to operate in a modern ZOS environment. Maintegrity has taken FIM way beyond creating hash codes and verifying that your files haven't changed. The list on the screen represents the features we have implemented that help you detect and thwart ransomware attacks. We're going to go over all of these in some detail in the following slides. FIM Plus is a highly automated enterprise system. It will detect changes to files, then it will enable you to take action automatically via preset action definitions. For instance, and we will go over this, if FIM Plus detects a changed or added file, it will initiate actions that you have defined. You may want to check in your change management system to see if a change request exists for this change, and if not, take a more serious set of actions than if one does exist. Because FIM Plus integrates with other tools in your enterprise, it's a really, really powerful ally in your defense against ransomware. Whitelisting is recommended by many organizations as something that should be done to counter ransomware. The reference on the slide is to a U.S. government interagency document written to provide organizations a framework on protecting themselves from these types of attacks. There are quite a number of agencies mentioned on the title page, but they include the FBI, the Department of Justice, Homeland Security, and a number of others. What is whitelisting? The definition on the slide is from the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST as they are commonly referred to. Basically, a whitelist describes in a baseline the programs that are authorized to run in your processor and notifies you if any of those programs change or if any other programs have been added or deleted. In the NIST paper reference, they do indicate that the best way to implement whitelisting is by using a file in integrity monitoring technology. They also describe that some of these FIM solutions just detect changes and notify you about the changes, but the really good ones detect, notify, and take action. 
FIM Plus is in the latter category. L will go into this a little bit more later on, but we can automatically quarantine a suspicious file. We could even delete it, although that's probably not your best strategy. These types of actions can be set up to occur when the change is detected without human intervention. In the FIM solution, some auto discovery features are provided to help you build baselines on your system software. FIM Plus will auto discover your APF libraries and your product program product libraries, including JES, CICS, and DB2. This technique can automatically start building your whitelist within minutes of installation. Of course, you can create baselines for in-house developed or purchased applications. Another thing FIM Plus can do is support multiple baselines. Why? Well, if you're rolling out a new version of an application across many LPARs, you may want to have some LPARs on version X and some on version Y during the rollout. FIM Plus has the capability to support that. The benefit to customers of implementing whitelisting is that malware cannot get placed on your system without triggering an alert. This capability provides you with knowledge of changed files, even when a change was created by a user ID that had the authority. Notifications, <clears throat> including emails and text notifications to your response team, occur automatically so your response can get initiated as soon as changes are detected. The central banks in both North America and in Europe are recommending that banks do checksums on their backup files to validate their integrity on an ongoing basis. The Cyber Resilient Resilience Oversight document that was created by the European Central Bank in 2018 to provide guidance to member banks on improving cyber resilience. It is a well-written document. If any of you are interested, Tegrity has written a companion document outlining where we can help in meeting the expectations that are set out in that document. We'd be happy to share that with you. So we were working with a large Canadian bank to provide them checksums and backups. One of their issues was that they had backup data sets that were a terabyte and more of data. When you go to do a full scan on a terabyte of data, it can take a long time. In order to reduce the time to complete a scan on these very large backup data sets, we have implemented the capability to do sample scans. Sample scans will create a hash code from a subset of the data contained in the file. The amount of data sampled in the scan is user specifiable. Every time you create a hash code to verify the file, a new hash code can be created to sample different data from the data sampled in the current scan. You can also have a scan that just verifies the first and last block in the file. This is for virtual tape files only. As we discussed, because the sophisticated bad guys target backups in the pre-ransom phase of an attack, it's very useful to make sure that your backups have not been tampered with and notify you the second that they have. We think the central banks are particularly worried about backups in major banks because a ransomware attack on a major bank could have a ripple effect throughout the entire financial market infrastructure. Whether sampling scans meet your validation requirements is really up to you and your auditors. I'm going to pass this along to Al now, but we're first we're going to run a little poll and then Al will talk in some more detail about some of the other features we have to counter ransomware. Before I do that, I'd just like to say thanks for listening and stay safe. Al, over to you. FIM Plus implements full file integrity monitoring for mainframes. This can be on a scheduled or an on-demand basis. Using the baseline keys that are stored in the FIM vault, we do a comparison which, with components that are actually in use on your mainframe today. If they are the same, we write a success record to the FIM log. If you have implemented the SIEM update interface, we also update your SIEM logs. We continue to do scanning on a regular basis and typically we find that everything matches and there aren't any problems. However, one day we might encounter an unauthorized change. Then we're going to raise a real-time alert. That alert can be delivered by email or by text message to your pre-configured response team. When they get the alert, all they do is click on the email. That brings up our automated forensic SCUI. And at the instant that that comes up, we already know what's affected and the attack interval. That's because our last scan tells us what the components were that didn't match. But it also tells us from the success records 
when they were last seen as correct. Once we know the interval, we can simply go out to SMF and fetch and display any of the records that are associated with that component during the interval in question. And we get that right up to the second. So you've got all the current information available to your response team immediately. But more importantly, it's exactly the interval in which things took place. So it reduces much of the concern and much of the issues with respect to a lot of information to look through in order to find out exactly what happened. Once we know the components involved, we can go out and see if they're approved. So another click on the uh, FIM GUI takes you out to perhaps a ServiceNow instance running in the cloud or Remedy running on uh, another platform or maybe perhaps even in the mainframe environment. However, we locate your change records and then we check to see if this component should have been changed. Is it covered by an approved change? If so, why did it change? But if not, hmm, now we have a problem. We might want to Im uh, invoke our standard compare program. If it was a parameter that changed or something that uh, uh, can be seen by a human, we might want to invoke the compare program and compare the baseline copy to the current copy. That can tell us whether it was just a comment line that was changed or whether there is something more sinister at work. At the same time and in parallel, we could be escalating through your SIEM processing if you have that implemented. It's important that this that FIM can talk to your SIEM tool in a bi-directional manner. That means you could put a scan button simply into your SIEM environment and when anybody kicks off an alert, any of the security tools that you have, we can verify that with an immediate on-demand FIM scan. That gives us access to all of the information that we already had via the scanning process. So it's a really nice interface that allows you really much more functional um, response from your SIEM. Once we've done all that, we simply have to decide, you know, was that a false positive and we should suppress it, or was it a real malicious attack and should we start recovery? Of course, FIM Plus provides you the recovery assistant, and that builds JCL based on the interval of the attack again. So we go back to the success record, we can pull things out of your backup um, and produce all of the processes necessary to implement that. You simply then have to kick that off to get back to your desired state. And of course, you have FIM Plus available to you to do a scan after the restore to ensure it exactly matches the environment that you want established and is the correct one for you. As if that wasn't enough, we also supply real-time early warning and alerts. We do that by way of the SMF log streams capability. For instance, we talked a little bit about checksums on backups and validating your backups. Today, almost all hackers will try to compromise your backups before compromising the real target. That gives us an early warning if we can detect that. So our checksum processing that we put in place for those backups can kick off a standard FIM plus uh, function on demand, update your SIEM, alert your response team, and go through the standard processing in exactly the same way. So you're covered both on a scheduled basis and in real time if something goes wrong. FAM Plus is an enterprise tool. We provide continuous monitoring for ZOS, all of its subsystems like CICS or IMS, and any applications that you might run in all of your LPARs. 
we check executables, JCL, configuration parameters. We provide checksums on backups for rapid validation, as well as image copies and log files. Files can be encrypted and they don't need to be decrypted uh, in order for us to protect them. And we also support the Unix environment uh, on the mainframe USF and all of its file systems. Our express install provides auto discovery. So if you use the defaults when you install, we'll look for all the CICS libraries. We'll look for all the ZOS libraries and any applications that you direct us to. We believe that because you can run that whenever you want, that also leads to a zero admin type of environment. And when you start thinking about how FAM Plus can help you validate other alerts from other tools, you might find it dramatically reduces the admin requirement overall in your environment. We're very efficient and cognizant of CPU time. So we offload most of the processing to the crypto cards that are available on most uh, mainframes today. But FIM Plus understands that it's not alone in the world of security these days. Certainly we, we provide conclusive proof, but at the same time, our REST APIs allow us to talk to almost all of the REST tools that are available in the mainframe context and if imp implemented on other platforms or in the cloud. That's an important thing going forward. We provide scheduled and on-demand uh, scans. You can also kick them off from a batch step that you might add to your uh, existing change management process. And there are ways to uh, invoke this from other programs as well. So exit or East days. Uh, it supports both new and existing staff because of course we provide a 3270 interface and also a GUI interface. That means that all of the information we collect can be presented in an interface that uh, the user is familiar with without having to try and find out new things about new environments while you're trying to solve a critical problem. And the real-time email and text alerts direct to the response team mean that we can be on top of the problem in less time than it takes somebody to phone a, que a question in. Let's look at how this really works from a user aspect. FIM sends an email to your response team or administrative uh, support uh, group. They simply click on the click on the email, and up pops our um, GUI. You can see in this environment that the second it pops up, we already know when was the last time this module. Uh, or this component was correct. And when was the scan time? That gives us the interval of the attack. By the time we get this started, FIM Plus will have already fetched the most current SMF information. And you can see here exactly who accessed the, those components and who might have updated them. Then you can start taking real corrective action. On the next click, we fetch the service now information. In our particular instance, we go out to the cloud and, and get the reason why this changed. Oh, in this case, there wasn't a reason because there wasn't a change record that was associated with this component during this interval. Hmm, looks like a problem to me. Now, we kick off our, our um, compare program. Oh, the component in this case that got changed was a TCP IP parameter list. Hmm, it got moved from New York to Russia. Hmm, that could be a problem. One more click and we're into our recovery assistant. We start to build JCL. We start to, re to look at your backup files during the interval, going back to the ones where we know they were secure. We start to build JCL for you, or perhaps you've got HSM and we could do the same function by restoring, doing an H recovery. In any case, we get you all prepared to do your recovery in record time, knowing every component that needs to be updated. And when we're finished, of course, 
you can verify that by just simply kicking off another scan in FIM Plus. FIM Plus also allows you to take policy-driven actions in an automated manner. Once you've verified that you have a real alert, now you can get into action right away. Perhaps you might want to have the user ID suspended, or you might want to quarantine the components that you know are a problem. Perhaps you need to find out exactly everything that changed in a given interval. That's what our oversight report is for. And filtering provides noise reduction initially, but the overall functionality of FIM Plus probably prevents a lot of false positives from other tools by corroborating the information that they're providing. Of course, at every point, you can invoke our automated forensics, but some of these uh, actions can now be prescripted so that in a crisis, you know exactly what to do. But the bottom line here is, how long does it take you to react? In the classic response, we hope our backups are okay. We hope all our components haven't been modified, haven't been altered in an unauthorized sort of manner. In the FIM case, we know whether they've been altered or not. We have compliance. We actually can prove whether those are in the desired state or not. Not only that, we can do real-time alerts. We can deliver those to your response team. When the response team gets it, we already know who did it. And the classic response, that's the beginning of some research. We don't exactly know who it was, and we have a lot of records to look at. Not only that, we can see what else they did. Hmm, how long does that take with manual SMS F searches and getting all of your security team put together to try to determine what the real scope was? We have our automated forensics that provides you the information, whether you're an experienced user or somebody relatively new, all of that information is valuable in making the right decisions. And our restore assistant actually allows you to recover much more quickly. That means we get over our problem and we get back on the air in a lot less time. We always like to say, knowledge plus action equals avoidance, not ransom. Compliance is another key issue. FIM Plus provides whitelisting, backup on checksums, ransom early warning, many things that are actually improve the underlying security of your mainframe. In the enterprise environment, using the standards supplied by NIST and PCI and many others, we see that typically there are five major areas and FIM Plus helps you in every single one of them. But in the, in the long run, by doing the right things on a regular basis, you'll have better security. And when you have better security, you have better compliance. However, FIM Plus, with all of the success records and all of the alert records and all of the information in one place, provides you a valuable way to prove that you're compliant in addition to being compliant. So better security will lead you to a better compliance score. And with the auto discovery capabilities, that can happen overnight. We always like to talk about fast install, but in the compliance area, sometimes it's pretty important to be able to fix outstanding issues quickly without a whole lot of effort. So how does that really help us deal with a ransomware attack? Well, we can't really stop the hacker from going to the dark web and getting a valid user ID for your site that allows them to log on to perhaps an attached Windows machine. So they will be able to get some level of access, but then we can stop them in their tracks. We have verified backups. So if they try to compromise those, we'll give you an early warning. We, we see that our real-time alerts and our uh, automated forensics 
give you a way to react in a fraction of the time formerly available, uh, formerly required. So that's fast reaction. Either keeps you on the air or gets you back in the air, but it certainly prevents the fact that you have to look at paying a ransom. We know by the scope of everything that was affected. So we don't have to spend weeks trying to find out what that hacker actually got into. The final analysis is we probably prevented that hacker from being able to implement a successful ransom attack. So you don't pay a ransom. You simply use our recovery uh, facilities to get you back to a trusted state in record time. Why do you need FIM now? Because with our whitelisting capability and our verified backups, we can help you avoid a ransom attack tomorrow. We can comply with the strictest portions of PCI, NIST, GDPR, and the banking cyber res resiliency guidelines. As well, we can make most auditors happy. We can react in an instant if a problem does occur. And we're fit for use by both experienced mainframe folks and people that are maybe not uh, as experienced with all of the tools and all of the places the data is located. So in the long run, we're just saying, take action. Take action now because it's very affordable in the context of a, of a security problem and it's very implementable because the auto uh, discovery capability and uh, service now discovery capability and all of the automated functions actually save you work and create a much stronger environment for you. So we'll go to questions and wrap up here in a second, but I want you to think hard about starting to prevent ransom attacks today. Because if you're ransomed tomorrow, it'll be too late. And you know, let's be honest, if a problem occurs, who actually does get hang up, hung out? Pretty much everybody. So it's got a pretty wide ranging effect. But you know, if you wanna get started, uh, We'll take you on a tour of FIM Plus under the covers. If you would like to request that, we have a much deeper dive as to how uh, many of these things take place or a customized session that can show you exactly how it'll work in your environment. Um, the best uh, test that we can provide though is for you to take it in your own site, run the auto discovery functions and, and run a trial. Uh, we typically say, you know, with our fast path acceptance testing and auto discovery, a week should be a sufficient amount of time uh, to conduct a trial. But I often talk to customers and I say, you know, we have had installations where people have installed in an hour and gotten useful function on the whitelisting side of things in the second hour of operation. So, uh, I mean, you don't have to think about this taking a long time. But at the end of the day, uh, mainframes are high value targets. We need to, to protect them well. Uh, and with that, I'll close up and uh, go on to some questions. 